Gave my wife a Christmas gift she'll never forget. Part 2. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Reddit cheating story. Before we start, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you won't miss another cheating story goes live. Anyway, I'd clued us in on my plan, as well as telling my older, and only, sister and two more of my closest friends what was going on. These are people I trust with my life, and I swore them to secrecy. For context, Oz and I have been friends since we were kids. The other of our friends Joey and Nina we've known since high school. Make note of Nina, she comes in to play down the road. July comes, and my SDBXW is in full paranoid mode. She's texting and calling me a lot more frequently now, asking me if I'm going to be home when she gets home, when am I coming home while she is and I'm not, asking me what am I up to, the works. I can see the seed planted in her head the month prior is starting to sprout, especially in her communication with Paz. She's confiding in him her doubt and confusion. Telling him that I'm getting cold and distant. The fucking nerve of this woman! Exclamation mark. In the interim of these interactions with Poss, she suggests that maybe they should stop meeting up at our house because she has no idea if I'd just show up, confirming that yes, she's had this fuckwad in my home. Thanks, Sue. Poss asked her in that specific communication that was she worried about me potentially cheating on her which actually pissed her off. I can't even begin to describe the level of joy and how many laughs I got out of reading that exchange. My cheating wife arguing with her affair partner over if she's mad her husband could be cheating on her. Oh the fucking irony. Now bear in mind, I'm not hooking up with anyone. When I leave, I'm usually at Oz or Joey's throwing back some booze, watching fights and spending time with my brothers, or at my big sis house hanging with her and my Bill, who's like an older brother to me. My sis is 52 and her hubby is 58. She had told him about my STBXW's infidelity, but not of my plan. Couldn't risk it as he's a bit of a blabbermouth. We'll fast forward now to October. That's when things seriously pick up. I've been in my faux affair for three months now, and Sue is hyper aware of the fact that I'm actively pulling away from her. It's been as long as the day I enacted my plan until the day she confronted me, October 20th, 2020 that I'd even touched her. No hugs. No kisses. No initiation of intimacy. Nothing. Not like she needed it, she was still fucking pos, just at his place or at motels. So that afternoon, she called me at work, which wasn't rare before all this began, but certainly hadn't happened in a while and asked me to come straight home after work saying she had something important to tell me. I'm not gonna lie to you all, I half believed she was going to come clean about her infidelity, but she of course didn't. Instead, I got home to her asking me if I was unhappy with her. The. Fucking. Nerve. She cites the fact that I've been spending way too much time away from home, I don't show her affection anymore and our sex life has completely died. She tells me she's worried I'm pushing her away because I was resentful of how she treated me the months I was rehabbing my knee. And then came the punchline. She fucking asked if I was cheating on her. Folks, I fell out on the floor laughing hysterically. And when I say hysterically I mean joker laughing gas hysterical. On the surface it looked like, to her assuming, it was me laughing off the notion of being unfaithful, but it was of course actually me laughing at the sheer irony of what was happening in front of my eyes. I'm tearing up, pounding on the floor in complete hysterics for a good two minutes before I compose myself enough to answer. I sit up and look her in the eyes for the first time in months, shaking my head, but I don't give her an answer. I stand up, brush myself off, kiss the top of her head and go about settling in for the night. Later that night, as I'm in my office I decide you know what? Given the brevity of what happened, I wanted to see what she was telling him. So I fire up the app and sure enough they're actually texting in real time. She tells Poss I know he's cheating on me. I asked him tonight and he literally laughed in my face. He fell on the floor and laughed for like 5 minutes. It wasn't 5 minutes obviously. He doesn't even care how I feel anymore. I don't know how or why, but he's gone. I know I've lost him. This is karma, I know it. The smile I had on my face reading that must have resembled the Cheshire Cat. She was breaking. Poss attempted to console her, saying that if I cared enough for her, she wouldn't have had to come to him to give her what I wasn't giving her, but the tone of her responses told me she was having doubts now. She had the nerve to step out of our marriage because I was unable to fulfill my role as a husband due to legitimate injury, and kept the affair going for nearly an entire year, but the idea of her losing me to another woman was enough to make her waver? What a fucking weakling. Now, during all of this I was also exacting the second part of my plan for payback, getting all of my affairs in order financially. In September, 
I had met with a family attorney to get the ball rolling on divorce paper, with the mountain of evidence I'd piled up to that point. New York is an at-fault state as far as divorce, and the overwhelming amount of proof I'd gathered displaying Sue's infidelity pretty much solidified I could nail her to the fucking wall in a divorce case. My lawyer instructed me to get all of my financials in order in preparation for whatever division of assets might come as a result. I went one better than that, secretly pulling all of my money out of our joint account and putting it in my personal account. I also started shopping around for an apartment as part of phase two. We're now in November, and I've not changed my behavior. In fact, I've ramped it up. This is where my friend Nina comes into play. For context, Nina and Sue have never been what you call close. I met Nina freshman year of high school two years before I met Sue. Even way back then, Sue has seen Nina as a threat, as she's my closest female friend. There's always been an implied I don't trust her from Sue regarding Nina. She's never addressed it directly, but it's obvious to anyone who pays attention. Conversely, Nina's never been a big fan of Sue. Early in me and Sue's relationship, Nina called to my attention how Sue was pretty much imposing herself into our little square of friends, whereas I didn't do the same with Sue's set of friends. That irked Nina because she knew why Sue was doing it, her. Among Sue's circle even now, there are no male friends, aside from Haas. Whereas Nina is the only girl in my square. Nina had been stuck overseas due to the virus, and finally returned to NYC November 3rd. Oz, Joey and I decided we were gonna celebrate her return with a night at Joey's house for dinner and drinks. There was only five of us, Oz, Joey, Joey's wife, who is also Nina's sister, Nina and myself. Sticking to CDC guidelines. We take the Rona very seriously. Nina, being the evil mastermind she is, comes up with an evil idea to trigger Sue. She suggested we take some photos in the same vein of the photos I discovered of Sue and Poss months prior, and post them to my FB. And that's just what we did. It wasn't until the 5th that Sue got wind of it, as I'm guessing a few friends noticed my updates and saw how uncomfortably close I was with Nina. This really fucked her mind up, because she still believed I was cheating, and I can almost guarantee she wanted to accuse Nina, but she knew that Nina had been stuck in Europe for the majority of the year. Still didn't stop her from attempting to dress me down that night for being so as she said handsy in the pics. I saw this as a golden opportunity to deliver the lead jab for my knockout blow. I say so what about the pics with you and Paws from last year? He was pretty handsy in them. But did you see me get bent out of shape over it? Dear headlights. It was the first time I even mentioned the dude's name throughout all of this. The hamster wheel in her head started reeling in real time as she tried to explain away those pics. To that point she hadn't even known I saw them, that's little I use FB. When I actually do post something it's like an event to people, which is why the pics with Nina specifically got so much traction among our circles. And explain away what she did. He's that way with everyone. He's just a really friendly guy. I can see how it looks, but there's nothing there. I'm sorry if those pics hurt you. I'll delete them. No, no, the pics aren't what hurt me. The year you've been fucking the dude whilst lying to me that you're working extra hours and hanging with friends is what hurt me. But vengeance, as Lieutenant Com. War from Star Trek, TNG so famously said is a dish best served cold. From that night, Sue was being extra specially clingy and attentive to me. Like, annoyingly so. She's trying to initiate affection and intimacy with me and I'd stonewall her at every chance. All the while, I'm still archiving everything she's saying to Poss. Mind you by this point I'd long since gone numb. Any desire I might have had to save my marriage was dead. I'd checked out the day I enacted the first phase of my plan. There are more to come. Find out the update of this story, check our channel or the description. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for any future cheating stories.